Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jennifer Niggle. If you are new here, thank you so much for popping by and giving this video a watch. If you are a returning subscriber, you know I love you guys so very much and I appreciate all your support. So in today's video, we are just gonna do a little bit of a day in the life of a part-time reseller, uh, part-time fitness instructor, stay-at-home mom, work-from-home mom, slash um, homeschool mom type of thing. So I thought it might be interesting to some of you guys. I put a little um, question answer thingy up on my Instagram and most of the questions had to do with um, basically like my reselling business and I do it part time, although it is turning into more of like a full time gig. Like it's, it's really fun. It's doing really well. And I spend a lot of my time sourcing clothing, posting clothing and shipping clothing. So it's something I'm really passionate about. Um, but my love and my passion lies also in my bar fitness program. I am the owner and creator of the body by Jenny bar program. And I'm an ex professional dancer who has been doing this for a very long time. So I do a lot of things. And like I mentioned, I'm also a homeschool mom. However, this year we're doing a more of a hybrid schedule. So we're going to get into that today. Um, but I just wanted to say hi to you guys. First things first today, we are going to take a little trip over to the Goodwill bins, also known as the Goodwill outlet. I'm going to try to source some clothing, wash some clothing, post some clothing, and I'll show you guys what I picked up. So if that sounds good, stick around and let's have some fun. Um, I kind of just have you guys propped up in my kitchen. Um, it's been warmer here, which is strange because we were coming into fall and I was super excited for colder weather because if you know me, you know that fall is my jam and I wait for it and I love it and I'm pumpkin spice everything. So anyways, long story short, it's been warmer in my studio, my home studio. And I filmed a whole thing about uh, building the studio. It's my filming studio for YouTube and also my private training studio when I teach ballet and I teach bar. Um, but I'll link some videos because it was part of my vlogmas last year and I just love that space, but it has been a little bit too warm to kind of go down there mid afternoon. So anyways, I wanted to give you guys a little bit um, of my schedule and how I kind of manage things um, with creating content and doing homeschooling and reselling and teaching classes and all of that. So um, if you guys have been following me for a little while, you know that, um, like I mentioned, I built my home studio back in December of last year. And since then I have been running my my semi-private and private training ballet classes and bar fitness classes from my home studio. Total complete blessing to me because I'm able to be here and get my son set up on his work. I can go down there and meet with clients um, around my schedule so I don't have to leave, drive anywhere. You know, gas is expensive and we do live a little bit further out. So it's a win-win situation for me. Um, and like I said, I can be here to help my son get started on his schoolwork and kind of keep him um, moving along with that while also doing something, making money and seeing my clients and doing something I love. So a typical day kind of looks like this. I generally try to wake up around 5.45 in the morning. I'll get up. I will immediately like get my coffee. I'll put my running shoes on. I'll go out front. I usually like to do like a little jog. We live on a pretty big property. So I'll kind of run down to our avocado trees, run back up. I'll do that for about 25 minutes. And then I will usually go back down to my studio and do a workout, maybe a mix of bar or a little bit of Pilates. Sometimes I'll do a classical ballet class and then I'll call it good for the day come back up here, take my shower, and then I'll usually get my son all set up with his schoolwork and we'll start that by about 8.45 in the morning. Today's actually a Thursday. So on Thursdays, I like to go and do thrifting. That is a homeschool day. Um, so my son loves to go with me. So what we'll do is we'll do school in reverse. So we'll wake up, I'll do my workout. He usually will sleep in a little bit on Thursdays and then we'll head straight over to the Goodwill outlet, which opens at eight o'clock. So we usually don't get there right at eight, but we try to get there about 8.30, nine at the latest because they're pulling out the bins and you wanna kind of get the first like pick of everything. And it's amazing how busy it actually is at eight o'clock in the morning. And you generally kind of see the same like reseller people 
every time you go. And then from that point, I usually come home. It's such a fun process for me. I love to wash the clothes. I know that's kind of weird and I love to list the clothes. So as my son starts his homework or his school work from home that day, I will be doing that. Um, if I have a client, I will meet with a client and that usually only takes about an hour or so. I'll start listing and by about 1.30 in the afternoon, he is generally done with that. I'm usually done with the stuff that I need to do with listing and um, all of that. And if I have any packages to ship out, I will usually get those ready. And then we might go back out, do some grocery shopping, um, go to the post office, mail some packages out um, and just kind of like get the house tidied up and all ready. So it's very manageable. But what I will say with having the uh, partial homeschool situation um, is you really have to be very diligent on time management. So a lot of times if I sleep in too late or I'm just not like fully focused on what I have to do for the day, if I don't write a task list, it can very easily get out of control. So if you are doing something like that or considering something like that, I would highly suggest like waking up early, planning out your day, maybe even taking a little bit of time the night before to like make a list of the things you need to do. It does take a little bit of time management. My son is older, so he's very good at just like doing his work. He understands what he needs to do and he's very diligent in doing that. So I don't have too many complaints, but like I said, we do need to be very focused when we are doing the homeschool. What's nice about Thursdays is there's not a huge workload usually on Thursdays and Fridays for school. So it's a time where if we do want to do it in reverse, like I said, and go do fun stuff in the morning and then do homeschool in the afternoon, it usually works out because there's not a ton of stuff to do. So anyways, I thought I would just kind of tell you what a normal day looks like for us. And I just think it's such a benefit to doing a homeschool program. I know it's not for everyone, but for us, it works out really well. We don't live super close to, um, super close to the town. So we do have to drive a little bit, which isn't too bad either, but it does uh, save on gas. Like I said, just kind of being here, being able to work from home, being able to do homeschool. And he does go in person twice a week. So he gets to see his friends and he gets to still be part of a school setting, which is really, really great. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. All right, so I've rambled for a little bit too long. So let me show you guys what I picked up at Goodwill Bins today. Very first item is just a skull long sleeve Adidas print um, top. I believe this is an XL. I'm gonna do some research on this one because I'm not exactly sure what the graphic is, but I think it'll be a good seller. Next up, I got a lilac wild fox crew neck, uh, just women's sweatshirt. This is a brand that typically sells really well. Size small, so I always pick up the crew necks when I find them. And then next up is a vintage 1990s velvet animal print Fredericks of Hollywood corset. I am obsessed with this and I think it's gonna sell very quickly. And then I always kind of pick up just um, cute little zip up hoodies. This is an XL. I think this was a festival or something that happened. Not really sure, probably gonna do some research, but it's a good Hanes cotton. Last score for today, which was a big one, is this cow leather 80% um, wool jacket by Golden Bear. This is vintage. This is 1990s as well. It's an excellent, excellent condition. It's a size medium. This could definitely be unisex, so I'm really excited. Okay, this is a score. This is from another haul, but this is FTP, basically F the population. It's a streetwear brand. This is a rain jacket. It was from their fall winter 2020 collection, and this is going to be a quick sell. Neiman Marcus score. This is vintage. I'm not sure, but I think this has to be at least 1970s. I actually found these. These are Converse AYSO Collab 1970s rare vintage soccer cleats. These are size six and these are already getting a ton of likes. And like I said, these are super rare. So this was a score. Three, getting ready to make dinner and show you what I got at Trader Joe's. Not tried this yet, but I love pumpkin anything. So this is the pumpkin brioche twist. And then I also just picked up some chicken spring rolls. These are like a staple in our house. And I did get some sweet potato gnocchi. Haven't tried this one yet, but I'm super excited. And I might have this for dinner tonight. Um, I picked up another type of pasta. I've had this one in the past. It's, uh, I don't even know how to say this, but it's with the pink sauce, really, really good. And then I always try to have just like a simple salad that I can have um, like for dinner or for lunch. So I picked up two of the Mexicali salads, really, really delicious. And I got a bunch of apples, but I don't need to show you all the apples. So Envy is my favorite and that's the one I always go to. I've been having these a lot lately and I just picked up a little bit of chicken breast to like put in a salad or just for sandwiches. 
So I want to briefly describe kind of how I schedule my content creation for like Instagram posts and YouTube videos and things like that. So I generally try to film about two to three times a week and I just do batch content, meaning I just kind of film everything in one day and then I kind of ed edit everything at night. And then throughout the week, I'll kind of put these different um, clips up on Instagram, on YouTube, and I'll use them for YouTube shorts. I try to make them different, um, different music, so it's not all the same content. Um, but like I said, I'll film a bunch of things all at once that I can use across a bunch of different platforms. So I'm not filming every single day because otherwise it just gets too time consuming and I just don't have time for that. So this was just a small clip that I used recently with uh, for a collaboration I did um, with another instructor and also just for a few clips on Instagram. So if you do it that way, it doesn't take a ton of time. You can kind of get it done in a couple hours. I will say for YouTube, it's a lot more time consuming because you're having to do and edit a lot you know, longer content. Um, but generally I will do that either as I'm going or at night. All right. So this lighting is terrible, but I just wanted to finish up the vlog here. Um, thank you guys for watching it. Thank you for subscribing and um, leave me a comment so we can connect and I'll see you guys in my next video. I have a workout video coming up very soon, um, in collaboration with 3d active. So that's going to be very fun. And we're going to do a lower body burn with some bands. So once again, make sure you're subscribed. I love you so much and I'll see you in my next video.